Hello friends, this video on Vector Algebra Part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched Part 1 to Part 8. Now let's discuss the most critical chapter the, or critical module of the vector, components of a vector, unit vector in this case. So we have, let's suppose we take three points A, B and C, A, B and C, three points I have with the points 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and uh, C, 0, 0, 1. So I have three points A, B, C. Let's write this in the vector form. So if you see this vector point A first, this guy is 1, 0, 0. So for this vector, I'll say A vector. In the x direction, it has full contribution. Why? Because this whole vector is an x direction only. So 1i, the length of this vector in x direction is 1, so 1i. y and z, there is no contribution because they are, this is all perpendicular to y and z direction. 0 j cap plus 0 k cap. This guy is nothing but i cap. So this guy a vector is nothing but a unit direction in, unit vector in x direction. So it is represented by i cap. Similarly, if we talk about b vector, the point is 0, 1, 0. So this b is 0, 1, 0. If you see, for b vector, in i direction, there is 0 contribution. In z direction, full contribution. And k direction, again, 0 contribution. This guy is nothing but a j vector. This b vector is nothing but a j vector. It's also a unit vector of one length. So if we talk about c vector, this guy, there is zero contribution in i, zero in z, and one full in k. This guy is k vector. This is also a unit vector. Correct. So thus, if you see all these lengths, OA, OB, and OC are one unit. Correct. And this follows our right hand rule. X, Y, if you rotate from here to here, you get Z. These you should keep on checking for all the questions because it is critical that we follow the right hand rule, right? And these vectors are all one unit vector in x, y, and z. So we are talking about three vectors here: my OA vector, OB vector, and OC. Correct? All these vectors, OA, OB, and OC, are unit vectors in x, y, and z direction. Now, if I have some position vector. If I have some position vector here, let's suppose P. So this guy will have some component in X, Y, and Z direction. So we'll we'll see this. So let's suppose my P vector is X, Y, and Z. Points are X, Y, and Z vector. So this P vector is denoted by R. So if you see in this case, this particular position vector can be written as R vector where this is nothing but x i plus y j plus z k where if you see x y and z are the components of this vector on x y and z axis because this point is x y z you see this guy is my vector p now if you want to find how much effect this guy has on let's suppose z axis so this guy is the effect this guy will have on z axis, right? This much. How? If you see this guy from here, this guy is my z. Similarly, for y, how much this guy will have on y axis, you take the cos of this, you get this much. Correct? Because you're talking about one triangle, right? So this guy is y. Similarly, when you talk about this vector, the effect of this vector on x axis. This guy is nothing but the x component of this. So that is xi. Correct? Because this vector is my this vector. It starts from here, it touches here. So this guy will have this much impact on x axis, this much on y, and this much on z. So this guy is nothing but xi plus yz plus zk. Correct? So this is the form of vector is called component form. 
where you break this vector into x component, y component, and z component. Correct? So this guy is a scalar, this guy is a vector, sorry, all the vectors x, i, y, z, and z, k. Where always the x, y, and z are scalars, they are all scalar components, and x, i, y, z, and z, k, these are all vector components because this guy is vector i i vector z vector k vector all are unit vectors in x y and z direction in that you are multiplying the scalar so you get this these vectors this is one vector this is one vector and this guy is correct these are the vectors you get these are the vectors you get x y and z so this particular vector r vector can be decomposed into vectors in along x direction y and z direction and that's what we write this so the same vector r can be represented as x i plus y z plus z k where x y and z these are all or i can say x i y z and z k are three different vectors You add all these x, y, and z vectors, you get r vectors. Correct. Mathematical, you can prove that you have x, i plus y, z. If you add, you get this this guy. Correct. I'll show you. You say x, i plus y, z. You get the dotted line. On this dotted line, if you add z, k, this guy is z, k. Because if you see, this guy is z, k. This guy, this guy is also z, k. P one p. So on this, you add zk, that is xi plus yz plus zk, you get this vector, that is xi plus yz plus zk. Correct? By, by the vector addition also, you can see that you, you add these two vectors, xi, yz, and zk, right? That is xi, yz, and zk. You get the r vector. That is, that is what x i plus y z plus k. How to get this? You x i plus y z. If you add, you get this vector. Correct, this vector. And this is your again z k vector. So you add z k vector here. You move this z k vector. So what you get here is this guy. All right. Correct. Similarly, we have done here. This guy is x i plus y z. On that you add zk, you get xi plus yz plus zk, this r vector. Okay. So what I can say that I had this r vector which is very difficult to visualize. I decompose this into three components that is xi in this direction, yz and zk. Correct? Please note. So I decompose this guy into x i y z and z k and note that this kind of coordinate system follows my right hand funda so you move from x to y your z direction should be your thumb direction so i decompose this guy into this is one of the way you write the vector so now we'll take one component of vector where the length or magnitude of any vector. So here we will determine the length of any vector by applying Pythagoras theorem twice. So this is my r. I have to find the length of this. The length of this if you can see is nothing but if you see I will show you. This my r vector is x i plus y z plus z k as we, we have discussed this part. Now I have to find length of r. There's nothing but x square plus y square plus z square root. So finding this is not that difficult actually. If you see in this triangle, this is y, right? And this is x. This is y, this is x. So this guy will be root of x square plus y square. Correct? So I'll write here, op1 is nothing but root of x square plus y square correct right in triangle op1s 
You take, you see this triangle OP1S, this guy is right triangle OP1S. OP1S is a right triangle. OP1S is a right triangle. So OP1 is nothing but, OS is nothing but my Y and P1S is nothing but X. So you get root of X square plus Y square. Now on this, if you see this triangle, this triangle, this guy is a right triangle here. Now I'm, I'm talking about this triangle OP1P. So if you talk about OP1P, OP1P, my P1 is a right triangle and my OP is R, OP1 I already found and P1P is nothing but Z, right? So my R is nothing but or magnitude of R is nothing but root of OP1 square plus Z square. What is OP1 square? x square plus y square because op1 is root x square plus y square so op1 square is x square plus y square and plus that and that is my magnitude of correct finding this was not that difficult just i applied this pythagoras theorem thrice twice and i got this formula so these two formulas are very critical for me please remember you have any vector r i can write that as xi plus yz plus zk where x y and z are the put, uh, the x, y and z coordinates of this position vector r and the magnitude of this vector r or you can say the length of this vector from this center 0 is x square plus y square plus z square. Let's take some example. I have to find the length of these vectors where a vector a is i plus j plus k. So here is x, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1 and z is equal to 1. So my length of this vector as I know is nothing but root of x square plus y square plus z square. Why x1? Because it is 1 into y, 1 into z, 1 into k. So 1, x is 1, y is 1, z is 1, right? So this becomes root of 1 square, x is 1, 1 square plus y square, 1 square. And that is also 1, so 1 square. This becomes root of 3. So the magnitude of this guy is root 3. Similarly, in this case, my x is 2, 2, y is minus 7, and z is minus 3. The magnitude of bi is nothing but root of x square plus y square plus z square. What is x? 2 square. What is y square? Minus 7 square. What is z square? Minus 3 square. 2 square becomes 4, minus 7 square becomes 49, 3 square becomes 9. So this is nothing but root of 62 and that is my answer. So finding magnitude is very simple if I have a vector in the form of xi plus yz plus zk. The magnitude is nothing but root of x square plus y square plus z square. So till now we have learned what is vector, how to write the vector in the component form. Let's do some examples. Let's get ourselves more used to vectors. Let's write two different vectors having same magnitude. I can write any two vectors. For example, I say if my vector is in the form xi plus or ai plus bj plus ck, my magnitude is root a square plus b square plus c. Right? If I flip this a, b, and c, let's suppose it is bi plus aj plus ck. Both are different vectors. Here also magnitude will be same only. B square plus A square plus C square. Both are same. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.